I mean, that, that's ice cold right there. The first step was to make the water pump, so I started making a couple of drawings on a piece of paper based on a couple of key measurements, the diameter of the shaft and the motor, and the PVC tubing used to guide the water with a diameter of 9mm. With these numbers I started sketching up the parts using a CAD software, once I thought I was happy with the design I 3D printed the parts using my Sheep Anit A8 printer. If you think I got it on the first time, think again. Quite embarrassing to be honest. Eventually I did get it just right and used two part adhesive and mixed it thoroughly. I applied it to the motor and attached the top part to it. Waterproofing is key so go absolutely crazy with the glue. I pressed on the impeller and made sure it was somewhat balanced, pushed the water pump together and locked it down using 3mm screws and basically drenched it in glue. You could avoid this by using a different filament. It was time to go back to the drawing board and make the container with no measurement to base my drawings around other than the size of a 33 centiliter can, I pretty much winged it. Here is the exact measurements. I went to my local hardware store and picked up a sheet of a 6mm water resistant board for $10. As I was going to paint it, I gave it a quick sanding to get it smooth. Transferred the drawings of the parts to the board, secured it and started cutting all the pieces. With all the parts cut out, I made a line 50 millimeters from the bottom of the side parts. The lines represent where the bottom piece should be glued and acts as a guide when attaching the second side part. Before we can assemble this, we have to prepare these two plates and this is the front plate, this is the back plate. So for instance, we have the water pump right here and the inlet has to ha have access to the water. So what I'm gonna do is carve out the hole right here. So the water pump will be protruding out in the back right here and have access to the water inside the container. We also have a adapter and a switch to uh, turn things on and off and this is a very cheap controller with a potentiometer and that lets us uh, control the speed of the motor. So basically what we're gonna do is carve out the spaces for each component. At this point I started to assemble the entire box and I was really happy of how well the parts fit together so I gave it a paint job. Turned out pretty good. And now we can finally install the water pump using a good amount of epoxy. I used hot glue for the connector in case I ever wanted to remove it, inserted the switch and the potentiometer, secured it with some hot glue and attached the knob. The next step was to make the rolling mechanism, so I cut off a 15mm wooden dowel 245mm long. Hooked it up to a drill and simultaneously moved the hot glue gun along the dowel to create this rather nice looking pattern that will increase the friction between the dowel and the can. I made this ring and glued it to the inside of the container for the dowel to rest on. Then I drilled out the hole for the motor and pushed the dowel onto the shaft of the motor. Gave it a quick spin to make sure it's balanced. If it's not, it will make a lot of noise. I then inserted the PVC tube into the water pump outlet, drilled a hole in the top cover and pushed the other end of the tube through the hole. The end result should look something like this. The final step is to make the electrical connections. I connected a red and a black wire to each terminal of the jack adapter, connected the black wire to the middle terminal of the switch, made the motor connections and drilled a small hole for the wires to go through. I did the same for the motor in the back. The orange cover is called wire mesh guard and is only for looks. Lastly, I connected each red and black wire to the controller accordingly. 
I also made these good looking signs to boost the appearance. Now all I had to do was connect the power and we could try it out for the first time. I quickly realized that the motor was a little weak, it had a hard time rolling the can, so I took out the dowel and removed the hot glue, and that ended up working a lot better. Alright, this is very interesting. I have one drink at 17.6, the other one at 17.3. Uh, I'm gonna put one into the ice bath and one into the cooling machine. I'm gonna set the timer at one minute and at the end of it, we're gonna measure the temperature again and see one, uh, see which one is the lowest. Uh, I will do this in one take, so I will speed up the footage. All right, here we have the one from the cooling machine. 9.8 and the one from the ice bath, 15.9, 16. Here's a quick explanation of how this contraption works. By spinning the drink, the warm liquid in the center will move outwards, causing more of the warm liquid to interact with the cold water on the outside. Basically, the icy water on the outside will absorb a lot more heat a lot faster than something like a freezer or a nice bath. Thank you for watching and share this video with uh, one of your friends that might need this. Have a nice day, bye.